Reconstruction, along with um, uh, Louise Herkus of the Dora Ura um, phenomenal system pronouns, and then her later work was reconstructing uh, pre war removal pronouns. And uh, Jane, for pre war removal, she reconstructed um, a, a pronoun um, or um, uh, as first person singular nominative, and she recognized. Uh, that its similarity uh, to uh, now, which is about first person singular nominative in uh, Yugi languages to the west, to the subset at least of the Yugi languages, but then to the east, uh, to the uh, Nana languages or Wallawarik languages, where we have a full form Nana, but also in Wakaya and Yanula, we have um, derived uh, bound forms. And Jane speculated that perhaps the, um, the the Awaramun form had come from uh, the uh, Wakaya. So I want to um, just e explore the origin of Nana or to sort of trace um, the existence of Nana around within uh, Pamanyan languages today, uh, taking off from Jane's work in a sense, and um, establish its place relative to the reconstructed Brodo Pamanyan uh, case paradigms of first and second, and first person singular pronouns. When I say first person, I'm only talking singular okay, today, so just the first person. And I want to compare with the same um, set of languages, the partly parallel history of the first person with the second, uh, the first person, Nana, as a nominative, with the um, uh, second person, Nin, uh, obviously derived from proto pan Newman, being reconstructed as the nominative proto pan Newman form. And then compare uh, the new bound pronoun uh, case paradigms, first and second persons, um, which very strongly reflect the proto palman and three pronoun paradigms have been reconstructed with the rather weak reflexes um, of those case paradigms that one finds uh, in the freeform pronouns in the uh, Yogi languages, from which uh, we can say that Nana and Yin are mostly absent. So, uh, the uh, Nui languages, as they were defined really by a grain of uh, everywhere to the south and the, uh, the west of that dotted line. And the, uh, the languages that still what I want to you retain uh, these vowel pronouns that reflect pronouns, um, except for uh, the Nana, uh, 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 the ones that are marked here. So the northern language, uh, Subgroups, Mumayaba, Mayu, uh, most of uh, Wadi, and also found in Nayada and Karu, but not in the uh, others. And as uh, Harold um, marked this morning, the Bowen and Atkinson um, 2012 exclude Tour and Euro. Um, and also they incorporate this meaning group in the south, uh, Muna. It's not terribly relevant to my talk, but I think um, the Place of Tour Europe, I think um, this work has something to say about that. Okay, so uh, the subgroups that have these uh, bound pronouns actually vary um, in uh, how many of the languages within the group uh, actually retain them. So the northern languages, Manu um, and Romanyapa, they all have bound pronouns. They're the northern ones, but the ones that are sort of in contact with non pamanyu languages. Um, all the northern and central Wati languages have these bound pronouns, some reflexes of these bound pronouns, but they're absent from most of um, uh, Western desert languages. Only three out of 10 Nyada languages have retained them, and only two of the four uh, Karga languages have them. However, in both those groups, there's at least one language that has very, very robust, strong reflexes of these set of frameworks. So um, here I've tried to compare 
the uh, proto Parmenuian forms that have been reconstructed uh, for the first and second person. And uh, you'll notice that the, uh, there's absolutely no trace in the, this bound pronouns. Nyungi. When I say Nyungi here, I really should just say it's at least the subset of languages that have these bound pronouns. But on that basis, we can reconstruct uh, the forms that they have. And you, and, you know, you don't really have to be a linguist <laughs> to see the formal correspondence between uh, the proto and Nyungi forms and the and the uh, clinical or, or bound pronouns, so the initial uh, CVs missing, so to speak. Okay, so the absence of any uh, trace of the uh, probative. And um, for the second person, a dative, well, some people, I think we can reconstruct both a sort of a nyungal form, and that's the one that's reflected uh, in the newly bound pronouns, in full, um, but there's also a neural form, uh, for example, that uh, Koch uh, in a uh, 2014 uh, paper um, uh, reconstructs as the data form. And certainly that form shows up, but not in the, uh, not in the set of um, bound pronouns. Okay, the first thing you want to look at this data comes from is Mangu. And Mangu is interesting because, in a way, it most strongly reflects. Um, the proto parmenuin in that it retains uh, the accusative form ending in nya, so from nya nya, um, whereas, um, as we'll see, it's, it's not um, hardly elsewhere. Um, in, for the second person, it's only mano that actually retains the proto parmenuin yuna form as na, and the uh, karajari and nyama mother have taken the uh, what would have been the uh, locative form as the accusative. The other thing to note about these languages is uh, that they also have a sort of what I've called an augmented, so an augmented dative, so the jura and the jara from the um, locative, so the augmented dative from the locative form. Um, Moving on to um, woman yapa now. Obviously, you can see the strong reflexes of the, uh, the first person uh, nominative in na. Um, and it's only in uh, Western woman that we can see any reflex of the locative. And we're here. And the locative is, is, um, has become the, uh, the accusative form in, the, in, in long jury and jubilee. How, however, we also see um, the augmented locative there, as well as an augmented data. The augmented data is in the other languages, uh, which have no trace of a locative. Um, and in those languages, we get uh, syncretism between the data and the accusative. So clearly, the, there's no trace of the, of the credit coming in uh, the accusative in these languages. And the second person, we can see exactly the same pattern. So there's nothing particularly interesting there. Again, we can see the locket of retained in the Western um, woman, uh, but nowhere else. And again, this syncretism between our data and accusative. But a strong retention of the uh, augmented form, and this, um, which uh, shows up as la rather than ra in, uh, in woman yapa. Which is a regular correspondence. Okay, looking at um, at Wadi now, uh, and that was uh, a, a subgroup, the Wadi subgroup of uh, uh, Gray et al. Um, sort of branches. They have one man on one side, and the rest of the languages what they call the Western Desert group. And interesting, one man also seems to have uh, the accusative, the predicate, and the accusative nya. But whether that's borrowed or whether it's um, you know a retention, difficult to say. And there you can see that the, the first person, at least, the, the locative form ja has become reinterpreted as a um, accused as the date form for the first person. Um, um, and there's this interesting innovation uh, in the Western Desert uh, group of the knee, which we can see in some languages is but the locative uh, and the accusative. 
However, at the periphery of that Western Desert area, right in the Northwest, at Yulbarija, we get the retention of the vocative ja as the accusative, and down in Yankipajara, <laughs> that's towards the Southeast, uh, we also get ja, so I want to reconstruct uh, the ja, at least in uh, Western Desert. Um, and the question of nya at the higher level is, um, and in the second person, we can see a little less variation in a way where we've got this um, secretism in at least a subset of the languages between the locative and the accusative like in, in the Wapi languages. And also, you can see both in the first person and the second person traces of both um, uh, an augmented data than of the, again, with Ra, which is what it has in Ra. Now, getting to those languages where there's only a few languages that have found pronouns, but we can see really a fairly similar sort of a, a pattern in which um, the proto uh, Pamanyu and locative for as, as the accusative. That's a ja in the first person and in da uh, for the second person. And, more, and again, as in Waipi, more strongly. In the second person. So the second person is a much more sort of um, uniform system. You get a lot more variation, things going on, innovations coming in, again, like this me. Um, but we can see in White Jerry, the current language, um, that we maintain the uh, Jap as the blockative form. But I think it's probably an innovation in me uh, as the accusative form. So just to sort of sum up the, the sort of the comparison of, um, across these uh, subgroups, Nungic subgroups with bound pronouns with the proto and Nungic, this is sort of uh, what I'm showing here is that you know, I've reconstructed the, the proto of each uh, subgroup. Uh, and we can see there's, there's this very, uh, and, it, and, and I must say, I'm taking the that although it's the um, minority, the Western um, uh, uh, woman yeah, as, as the, the form with, uh, with Jack, we can see this um, strong pattern, I think, of uplocative uh, accusative sort of um, secretism. Okay. Um, now, I wanted to compare a little bit with the free pronouns that one finds in the numeric areas and try and do that quickly. But right at the very um, like a northwestern extreme, I guess, Anala, which has been um, taken at, as a Niota language, it doesn't have the bound pronouns. Uh, and then looking at the, um, on, uh, the Simpson and Herkes with the structure of Tura Ura pronouns. If we look at the Tura Ura first and second pronouns, I think you can just see a dead ring at the proto Pamanyum, right? There's just, you know, clear correspondence in particular. Um, we've got these sort of very form well, simply because there seems to be a reanalysis into something like a little bit um, uh, absolute type uh, uh, case marking system, basically. And now it's also interesting because we can see uh, that Nanya form. So again, it looks really very <laughs> proto Pamanyum. And whereas in the bound systems in the other um, writing languages, there's absolutely no trace of, of that um, proto common of nap or yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, it, but it's uh, here in Nala, which makes up uh, Nala actually quite an odd, an, an odd language. The other thing about the bound pronoun system, of course, as I mentioned right at the beginning, is that there's no bit of nominative contrast, right, which is not a subject form, which we call a nominative, whereas here we can see something that looks sort of apart from the fact that the Nala uh, Burgundy, both in the first and second persons, is clearly a reflex, I think, of the, uh, of the accusative. But this is a different relation to what we've seen in the bound pronouns, but uh, the relationship of the, the lipopative is the simple choice between the accusative very much in the episode, which is not surprising <laughs> in the strength of languages. Okay, just looking at um, from Genshin's data in uh, the other uh, languages, we can see there's a very, um, there's a few traces 
And this is really the, uh, the group that has the most traces of the proto-Parmenuid sort of system, but they're just little uh, traces. Obviously, the lobby form is strongly represented, and one can see it in both the lobby and the sort of other ending that's sort of become the base form. And some of these forms with you in it are really due to um, lenition, you know, stop to glide lenition, but they shouldn't have taken. That name there, I don't think should be taken. That's um, cognate with you know, the Palmer Hillman name. Um, and one, one can see all sorts of um, strange things. But in Yamal, one can see a distinction still between a dative and, and a locative stem, even though uh, extra paste marking is sort of on to say, you know, I'm accusative and I'm dating. That means I feel cool. Um, and one can also see the second person in the middle. Okay, so we've got um, uh, the accusative, pretty pretty common human accusative, is actually showing up here that nuna, again with nya, and that nuna is cool. And, and the, the fact that there's a distinction between the subject form and the non subject form. And for most of these languages, um, there's would be a syncretism with the accusative and dative. Right, which you can see there, which is uh, sort of distinct. At the same time, you can see the, the start of, um, uh, of using the sort of, uh, of an extra suffixes onto some base forms, but a very mixed um, sort of system. But if we look at the, the Wadi, Manu, and Mumbai, the upper languages, so they're the ones that we either all languages that we know, or most of the languages that we know have these cognate bound pronouns. Uh, you know, um, what has happened is, is really a, a complete recreation of free pronouns, uh, mostly on the, on the basis of the, um, of the proto-parmenuian um, ergative form, right? It doesn't show up at all in the in the bound pronoun system, the ergative form, and then with case marking. In most cases, it's the same sort of case marking that you get in the rest of the nominal system. That's it, you know, much further away. However, there's a few traces of common cases in some of the um, sort of uh, forms that are based on the genitive, like or locative, or whatever uh, forms like naji, nandi, etc. And Yunno uh, shows up in some of the languages in, in uh, rather complex sort of semantic cases that get added to that, so that quite sort of uh, oblique basis. Okay, in uh, the lang other uh, Numic languages, mantra free pronouns, again, we see this locket taking over as the subject form. Um, and there isn't a second person there, it's the plural completely. Chapter from the singular. Uh, in Kanyara, um, we again you get this locative showing up as the first and second person as the subject form as the base, and then you know various suffixes are put on to, to um, distinguish other pieces with a few funny things. Now going beyond uh, Nyomi to, to Nana, um, we can see that the Nana sort, sort of system looks like one would imagine the, the uh, the proto system that, that comes down into Nyungi look like because we've got these free forms, except for the missing data. There's absolutely no reflex of the data. But the accusative, the reflex of the proto coming with the accusative becomes the data. And that, that's true of the first person and the second person. This, interestingly, you also get um, the augmented um, accusative form. See that with la as in product, as in uh, woman yapa languages, um, and uh, at least the southern uh, languages uh, have also created another one with this uh, um or mu on the end. Okay, so now this is a comparison of the proto common Jungian, proto nana, and um, the uh, Jungic or pre Jungic uh, pronouns. I think they were, which are looking very much like the uh, nana pronouns, I said, except that 
um, you know, lacks the dative and then the, the bound pronouns. And as far as I know, nobody has tried to reconstruct um, equivalents of the uh, augmented pronouns in protocol. Um, going a little bit further afield, uh, East Minin, which is, remember, it's one of that really southern group that has no bound, no trace of the bound pronouns, but nevertheless, there was a trace of something that looks like Nana, right, as a preform pronoun. And interestingly, only in a non subject uh, form, remember, so the case endings are taken as an accusative. Um, and in that same language, um, a very found um, not to, which is obviously predatory form being used. So, coming back to one more, <laughs> um, we've got this uh, arm, which is very much like that, not as we said. And interestingly, uh, the, um, there's a, the accusative date of um, syncretism, which is what you get in most of the um, woman in other languages. Um, also applies, and you get the a trace of the um, of the uh, Jane form as well. Now, an outlier further out, I'll just mention is Galpatulma. Just there's one instance in which na is used as the first person critic um, nominative singular pronoun. Um, normally, it, in, in all other sort of circumstances, it's zero first person nominative in, in Galpatulma. Is zero, although the second person is, is the N, which I presume comes new. Uh, yeah. So, just to summarize, I think the origin of Nana, I would want to argue, uh, is, quite, is quite old in, in common human. Um, the innovation is reflected, obviously, in a, in a language is spoken over a very large contiguous area. Um, and I think the, the innovation of the clinical dates to, to pre newly at least the ancestors of the languages still retain it, I think the most conservative idea. And I think there was a, um, a unique uh, subject pronoun originally, um, a nominative fusative type, let's say, form. And I think the, the ergative nominative distinction has to, to be a later uh, innovation with the pre pronouns. And I think the absence of any trace of, of Nana in the Thura Yura, along with the retention of the um, proto-Thumbian Yuga case, forms a hint and weight to the idea that Thura Yura does not belong with the other uh, women languages. Obviously, there are many questions that you know, could also be addressed and answered, and it can be uh, a lot more work. Sure. Just some of the questions. <laughs> 